Hello everybody, it is Selena Donna and welcome back to my channel. It is time for Freaky Friday and on Freaky Friday we're gonna talk about true crime cases from the Netherlands and hopefully more from Europe throughout this series. I moved the true crime videos to my main channel because I want to keep my other channel for reactions and reviews when it comes to movies and everything fandom related. And since a lot of knowledge that I get for these cases are coming from the books that I read, why not do it on my booktube channel, hmm? So, before we're gonna get into the video, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and give this video a thumbs up if you find it informative and if you want to see more of these videos. The case that I want to share with you guys today is the case of Wincy, aka the Facebook murder. So what happened to Joyce Wincy Howe? We're gonna go back to 2012. We have Joyce aka Wincy and Polly who are two best friends in high school and you know what it was like when you were in high school. Your best friend felt like the bestest friend in the world. In my time, <laughs> in my time, we still had the not breakable thing so we constantly said need to break it, need to break it. so we're not breakable that's how tight everybody was even though now that you're grown up you don't see anyone anymore but these two were inseparable they were best friends for life they were both 15 years old and they loved doing what every teenager loves to do at that age shopping hanging out going to parties even though it's you know kid parties but they try to do every teenageable thing that you can think of. But at a certain stage in their friendship, they ended up in a fight. And maybe you would think, whoa, a fight, that is not so bad, right? Wincy cannot hold her anger in anymore and she is going on Facebook and she's just like, ha ha. I'm gonna say all kinds of things about Polly, aka my best friend, that I hate at this moment and I'm gonna say things about her that allegedly happened. Mind you that the things that she's writing are hurtful and sexualized things towards Polly and she's basically saying that she slept around while Polly had a boyfriend. Although if you have a boyfriend you can still sleep around but Allegedly, these things weren't true, so it was just Wincy going on Facebook and just fuming and just being angry and pissed at her best friend. When Polly reads what Wincy wrote about her on Facebook, she is just not just mad. She is fuming and she's furious because so many people responded to it, commenting on it, and she feels humiliated. We all know that the emotions of a 15 year old can go from that to that to that to that. So you would think that maybe she would just do things back at her and make rumors about Wincy, but she doesn't. No, 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 no. She goes to her boyfriend, Wesley. He's going to help her. Where I'm like, um, if you know that these rumors aren't true, isn't that just not true and you could just you know forget about it it's going to be hurtful but you as a people person know what is true or not but polly doesn't think that this is something that she can take care of herself so she has to ask wesley to do it for her so polly contacts wesley and she's just like fuming and and gushing and and dropping everything on this guy and she's just like you need to take care of that girl Wesley, on the other hand, who was blindly in love with Polly and later stated to the police that even if Polly would have said, you need to jump off this bridge, that that is something that he would do. That's how in love he was, allegedly. We don't know because we don't know these people. So Wesley is just like, okay, someone pissed off my girl. Nobody's gonna touch my girl. So he is contacting Jinwa and I'm gonna call him Jin because I don't know if it's Jin Hua or Jin Hua or just I'm sorry for pronunciation <laughs> but I'm just gonna call him Jin. Jin it is. So Wesley knows this buddy from going out and hanging out with each other from the pictures that I've seen it was a big group of Asian people meeting up with each other so I think they were just like hey we're the minorities we're gonna hang out together and I, I like that. I like that when people have that going for them especially in your teens you want to know where you belong so you're gonna try and find out the right group to hang around with and from what I've seen and from what I've heard from the interviews they seemed like a really big group of people that should hang around with one another and there were different kinds of friendships but okay so Wesley goes to Jin and he is 
threatening him that he needs to take care of Wincy for around 100 euros and at that time that could have been much i think for a teenager 100 euro is a lot of money okay teenagers in my time not <laughs> if i see all that gucci stuff and everything um no but back then 100 euros was a lot at this time wesley is 17 years old and jin is 14 years old a few other articles also said that it was for 20 euros or for 50 euros so I just I'm gonna keep it at 100 so Jin also stated that Wesley told him that if he didn't take care of Wincy he would send the Chinese Mafia to Jin and his family so little side note when it comes to the crimes that they do there's barely anything about it even though they're still Chinese Mafia here in the Netherlands as well, but you don't read about it, you don't see anything on the news. It's always someone from the Middle East, Dutch or Suriname or Antillian that they're trying to find. Have you ever noticed that? <laughs> I don't know if that's the same in America or the UK, but I barely see anything about Asians in the newspaper. I've never seen, oh, we're looking for this person or wanted this person. It's an Asian, da 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 da. It looks like never ever. So, to see this story, that was a really big shock to me. Like 40,000 people are going missing every freaking year and we just don't know what is going on, where they gone to, uh, who take them. They say the Chinese Mafia, but we don't know. And of course there are so much more Asian ethnicities and yet we don't see anything of it. And I am so curious how it is that they can keep such a low profile while operating on these criminal things but that's just a little side note so if you have true crime stories about asian crime then i would really love to know the titles because i'm trying to find books or articles about this and how this cannot be public but i just have no idea how how this is possible but anyways it's a side note wesley threatened me and said if you don't allegedly if you're not gonna deal with wincy for 100 euros, I'm gonna send the Chinese mafia to your family and they're, they're gonna be done. Jin, on the other end, is like, you know what, I'm gonna do it. But I haven't seen anything about if he asked them what was happening, what was wrong. I think from what I've seen in the pictures and the interviews that everybody knew what was going on between Wincy and Polly. That they were in a big fight and that there were rumors going back and forth and that it was just one big mess and that everybody was just like in on it. And some friends also stated later that they already knew that something was going to happen because that was said on Facebook. But nobody actually took action. So Wesley also let Jin know that Jin needs to take care of Wincy before 3 o'clock because in the afternoon she is going to take music class lessons at 3 o'clock. So Jin is like, okay, I'm gonna do this. And he leaves his own house at 2 o'clock with a knife. And then I have another side note. I don't know what is going on with the world, but we are living in a time where 10 to 17 year old kids are keeping knives in their pockets. It's all over the news. I saw different videos on YouTube and there's this group of rappers and it's called Thrill Rap and then they're talking about who they're gonna and shoot and if you're gonna come in the neighborhood. And I, when I was younger, I was always like, Pfft. We don't have a hood. People are always talking about being on the street, but we don't have that. But now seeing all these videos and even little girls are being involved and they also carry knives because they don't feel safe. It's just, it's mad. When Can you still remember when you were in high school and there were people like, oh, we're gonna fight, we're gonna fight. And then it would still be people fighting, but you know, with their fists. That doesn't exist here anymore. Now it's like, hey, hey, four o'clock, I'm gonna be there. Uh, bring your machete, I'm gonna kill you. Blah, blah, blah. And they do. That They do kill each other. They I've seen documentaries about this, short documentaries, on people slicing other people and video material. And I'm like, blow my mind. But anyways, I just needed to share that because this guy, Jin, went 
to Wincy with a knife and that was so surreal for the world at that time or at least especially Holland and of course other countries were also involved because it was such a big thing because Facebook was involved but to realize now years later that this is normal it's just mind-blowing to me but okay let's go back to the story Jin is going to Wincy with a knife in the afternoon so on January the 14th Jinwa goes to Wincy's house and he is ringing the doorbell of course not with the knife but he's just you know ringing the doorbell and Wincy's father opens the door he's just like mm, she's here I'm gonna call her and he goes back to preparing his food he was just like that is a normal guy standing here it's probably one of her friends hello I'm gonna call her which is totally understandable so Wincy goes to the door and the moment she is at the door he is attacking her with a knife. Wincy's dad hears a scream and he is running to the door so the moment he steps into the hallway he's being attacked in his face. So while he was here trying to defend his daughter because something clearly happened he is being attacked. He tries to fight Jin off and he sees a lifeless body of his daughter on the staircase even though she's still breathing. He calls 112 as fast as he can and this sounds really weird let me just say he calls 911 aka 112 in Holland and they arrive as fast as he can. Meanwhile Jin has fled the street. So both Wincy's dad and Wincy are taken to the hospital and Wincy is like in this sort of a coma she's not waking up and Wincy's dad needs to have a big surgery on his face because he was sliced badly and it's still something that you can see he is painted for life so meanwhile Jin is running for his life and hiding in the bushes the police is trying to find him and when they know that he is in a bush he doesn't want to come out so they fire a warning shot and that's when he is coming out and they can lock him up in the police car and bring him to the station Five days later, Wincy is still not waking up and eventually she dies of the heavy injuries that she had to encounter and that she got from, from being stabbed by Jin. So there are a lot of really weird things with this story. It's a pretty short story, but... So when we go back to Polly and Wesley, they both had this idea and Wesley is the one who actually made sure that Jin was the one who was going to execute it. But he gave him the idea but Polly gave Wesley the idea there are three people that need to be punished but because they are under the age of 18 they're not getting much more than two years so Wesley and Polly got two years plus TBF the prevention detention and I tried to explain it in, on my other channel prevention detention aka TBS is that a group of doctors and specialists are gonna sit around the table and they're gonna be like mm, are you ready to be going back into society uh, do you take your medication well they they're gonna try and see if on all fronts you are ready to go back into the society and that's why when someone is being killed they don't say go for life sentence because that's gonna be 25 years and not more but if you go for a life sentence plus tbs tbs is something that you can always extend so if a doctor says nah i don't agree with this they can extend it for two years and then after two years they say uh uh that person is still not ready and then you can extend it as long as you want because all parties have to agree that that person is going to be stable enough to go back but these people only got two years within those two years they got that tbs it's just crazy to me but what is even more crazier to me is that jin got one year of you juvie and then three years of tbs and i'm just like you just rob someone of that future you just rob someone of the family member their daughter You're just gonna get one year and then three years in prevent detention like I can't wrap my mind around these rules for young kids like if you kill someone you kill someone I don't give a shit if you're a kid what I do care if like if it's a self-defense or did you do it on your own because if you can make such grown-up decisions I do think that you should have a grown-up punishment but um not everybody agrees because uh, the public prosecutor also agreed because he was like um, 
he should get like the sentence for a grown-up but then the court was like no this will be better because the media is watching as well they gave him the youth sentence because they thought that this case got enough attention as it already gotten and they thought that this would be inspirational for everybody outside of this case So what you're saying is that Wincy is the example for the rest of the people to scare them away from don't do this, don't do this. And therefore Jin is not getting more than one year and three years of TBS. It's just I would break that motherfucking cord if I was her family. I would just lose my mind because this is not to be an example. I just want someone to be punished for what they did and clearly they didn't and I've already read that Jin was free on you know probation and that he already fucked up so he got back in it but only for another year so there was already I think a little bit of bad blood in Jin but we don't have a lot of information we don't have information about how he grew up about his family about how he was in school nothing it's just this story that i can find and that's it people say that he was more like a quieter one but yeah the quieter one always have a lot of debts so this is all that i can give you on this story but i did want to share it because it's so weird to me that going from a rumor that you don't even know is true to going to another extent and just Make sure that someone is being assassined. If that's is that even a word? Assassined? Can you be assassined? I don't know. But you know what I mean. What I did like was that Wesley and Polly both got a punishment too. But the only thing and weird thing and sneaky bitchy thing is is that Polly was also in the silent blog. At first the silent blog was not being held because the media or at least the court was just like no you can't do that because it's getting so much attention but they held the silent blog anyway or the silent march and then Polly was there as well and then later this all came out and people noticed that oh my god she's the one who sent her boyfriend to go kill Wincy but this is just this is so crazy it's just and now realizing that I'm also living in a time where it's, it's gonna be normal if someone says something like this on Facebook because of the I'm gonna kill you, come to my neighborhood. It's just, <laughs> just a few weeks back, someone was being heavenly stabbed in the wing. <laughs> that, is, that is Dutch. Someone was being heavily stabbed in the grocery store just like five minutes away from my home. And I hear so many, wee, 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 and I was like, why? What the fork is all going on? And then I read that a 14 year old was being stabbed by a 15 year old. I was like, what could he have done? Cut in line? Like, whoa, what are you gonna do in a supermarket that is going to piss you off at eight o'clock at night? Like, it doesn't even matter what time it is. It doesn't even matter. All that I wanna say is be careful with what you say online, on the internet, it's just, I wish Wincy's family the best because I cannot even imagine what it would be like if you lose your child to such horrible, gruesome thing, then also lose your kid for something that is not even true because it were rumors. And then to see that the people who caused this only get a few years and now they're like out and like dancing on the street. It's just, it amazes me. It is horrible. But please be careful, kids. Be careful with what you put on the internet. It can backfire big time. So this all is just so special. So I just, I can't phantom in what time I'm living um, but these things are happening for ages but it just it's getting more public because of social media um, the next one will be the manga murder and let me know and let me know in the comment box down below what you thought of this case and if there are any other Dutch cases that you want me to cover and don't forget to stay sassy but classy and stay safe thank you so much for watching bye